Hi folks, uh, this tutorial is going to center on an explanation for uh, English Home Language Grade 8 uh, Term 2 um, and basically as a comparison um, between the SAMS mark sheets and the Excel mark sheets that you produce from front office in order to be able to import these marks and, and to be able to produce the mark sheets in batch for that matter. Um, <clears throat> the there was there is already a tutorial out um, as I've put in in a previous um, email and uh, is in the uh, video ma manual index and that was focusing on grade seven, starting with the phase three because uh, it, it it tends to be slightly more complex. Um, and we'll move on to grade uh, to phase two after this. So what I'm going to do is, is, as you can see, this is the focus on on grade seven. I'm going to make a grade eight and a grade nine one, as they all three of them are are slightly different. Um, and then what I'm going to do is do a formula building exercise on all three of those as well. So you can see not only that the, how the explanation, um, or, or you can see the comparison between the sheets and understand what you're capturing onto the sheets, but then also how to build the formula for that. And we're keeping the tutorial separate in terms of the explanation and the formula, um, just to keep them a bit shorter. Um, so, okay, uh, basically you can see that in the grade eight uh, English home language mark sheet in SAMS, if you open term two, you would see this, okay, and the marks that you can see in the R01 column actually come from the term one, uh, marks if we go to the term one marks and you can actually see that the original mark was out of 15 um, and converted uh, as a task mark also out of 15 um, but when in term two that uh, task th that that mark is transferred to term two as a mark out of 45 okay so that, that that's that's happening automatically um, this is then combined with the oral 2 mark so if we give these learners uh, marks here okay uh, and again this mark is out of 25 originally as an assessment or an activity it's then converted to a mark out of 15 for the task um, and then that exact mark out of 15 is, is carried across um, I'm not quite sure why they keep jumping around like that but in some cases you'll see it con as an activity out of something converted to something for a task mark and then transferred to another activity column as something completely different so they do jump around but I have uh, honed in how to how how to enable the formula to respond to these things. Um, okay, so these two marks then are combined, and you can see we've actually only filled in one set of marks, but now all these four columns are are populated, uh, and you can see that these marks combine to give you a task P1 oral mark out of 30. Okay. Um, so 13 out of 15 and 21 out of 45 um, are calculated, but they're calculated according to this weighting. Okay, so in other words, even though the oral one mark has jumped in here, it's weighted zero. So it actually doesn't contribute to this task P1 oral mark at all. So this mark of 26 out of 30 is basically... 13 out of 15 and you can see that in that if you convert this mark out of 15 to a mark out of 30 well you double it and it gives you 26 out of 30 so this mark uh, is is then it, it's it, this mark is solely comprised of the oral term 2 mark okay and what is more 
Um, and, and it's important to note that, that you see this is 22 out of 25, which is what it originally was. It gets converted to 13 out of 15 and pulled across to there as 13 out of 15 and then converted to 26 out of 30, well, given the fact that R01 doesn't count anything. So you, as I say, you can see how it jumps around. And you'll see in the formula building exercises we do how important it is to round off I have to round at each of these points when it jumps across because when you convert a mark out of 25 to a, say a mark out of 15 and you get 13.2 and then you jump it again and you get 30 you know it's, it's possible that it might go across the 0.5 mark and then you actually come out with a slightly different mark in your final tally so you have to round these things it's almost like as they convert backwards and forth all over the place students lose or gain bits and pieces of marks constantly um, but they don't um, have decimals in their task uh, columns, which is, is one of the reasons why I say it's so important that when your staff are copying and pasting their marks into the mark sheets, which s sometimes overrides the, the cell settings or the, the, the cell properties on the mark sheets, it allows for decimals to come in there. And that's not advisable because um, when those marks get pushed through to SAMs, which they do in the, in the sync process, those decimals are dropped um, and the numbers round off. SAMS does that automatically when it brings these marks up in this front end. Um, okay, so then just to, so then what happens is this, this, so this P1 mark then jumps across to this thing called P1 oral. You can see this is called T1, uh, task P1 oral. And that mark, which as I say, is actually only the, the task to oral mark jumps across into being one of the activities comprised uh, of which task six is comprised so so in actual fact if we track this thing it's the mark here which has uh, which has basically f for all intents and purposes jumped all the way across to here originally as a mark out of 25 and finally as a mark out of 30. Um, I can only think that they have these R01 columns in here even though they don't count because the home language mark sheets let's say in their design of SAMS um, has some kind of um, template afforded to it and you'll see that when we go to the grade 9 mark sheet that the R01 does carry a weighting um, and therefore the P1 oral mark um, is comprised of, of, of both marks and therefore the the activity mark that it jumps into in this final task six assessment uh, does actually involve both marks um, and and just to note that that this task P1 oral column and I did discuss this in, in the grade 7 um, tutorial um, is, is, is kind of like just a calculation section. It's, it's there only for calculation purposes. And you can see this by the virtue of the fact that this task is weighted naught. And later when I do more um, formula building exercises, you'll see that each segment of the formula I build represents a task. Because remember, as I've pointed out in the mark sheets many times before, the mark sheets don't show a calculated column. We, we don't want teachers to be having to sit and calculate all these little mini columns, so to speak. We only show activities or tasks where a mark needs to be entered. So, okay, in this particular example of a mark sheet, every single task is comprised of at least one activity. So, the entry points are all activities. But there are other examples of mark sheets in other subjects, let's say maths, for example, where the columns are only pink. Okay, well, if you went to SAMS, they would only be pink because, um, and that is because there are tasks. There are no activities within those tasks, but they are mark entry points. Okay, these tasks happen to have activities within them, and so they are calculated points. So the calculated points don't appear on the mark sheet. So just to bring the mark sheet into this now so that we can, we can do the, the actual comparison, and you can see we can clear up any confusion as to what you are actually entering. And again, this is roughly covered in the grade seven 
well it is covered extensively actually um, okay so you can see here is the mark out of 25 okay that is the first activity here is the mark out of 45 for the literature the second activity task 5 it actually says what we did was we took we got it so that although it showed only the mark where you capture for the heading purposes it took both these things and put them together so that you could see so literature task 5 and you can see that the activity reference is that number okay which is something sitting behind the scenes in sans not more for our purposes but it does help in terms of understanding and the task number um, is its is it, and and the task number is also represented in this column okay it's, it's almost like in a sense we have the task and the activity together in one column and just the single mark entry point um, and then in the formula building section of it we we get it to work things out if for instance the mark happens to be out of 25 but then the task itself converts it to a mark out of 15. so for example this weighting of 30 you don't actually see on here you're seeing them the weighting of a hundred because that that hundred is telling you that there's only one activity within this task and it counts for a hundred percent of what that task is comprised of again the same thing for literature there's only one mark activity in here it's out of 45 and it counts for a hundred percent of what that task is com comprised of you can see the task numbers have their own the task columns have their own numbers if you look for instance at the task p1 section okay so oral one and oral two combined you can see that the task reference is actually the same in other words we're not showing this final column here we're only showing well I say the mark entry points quote unquote because technically they're mark entry points although we do see that the oral one marks are automatically carried through from the term one mark sheets now in this case you're not going to have to worry about pulling those term one marks across into the into this mark sheet because as we've shown in fact they're weighted as naught and the task two mark is is fully the is comp is the f uh, the the oral, let's start that again the task p1 oral mark in other words the combination of both of them is fully comprised of the oral two mark which we already have sitting over here and again through some fancy footwork in the formula building exercise which we'll cover you needn't actually have this mark reflected in here just so that you can understand you can see that the activities have different activity numbers because there are oral 1 and oral 2 of course as you can see here oral 1 and oral 2 but the task that is the same number shows that these two activity columns are grouped again not something you have to know but for the purposes of demonstration and this tutorial it helps with understanding so um, so actually in actual fact you don't have to and I'm going to color these out red you don't have to enter a mark in them at all okay we will work on the future in, in the next cycle which is next year um, we will we will work on on what needs to show and what doesn't show however uh, it's um, it, it, it ends up being grade and subject specific uh, particularly in the case of languages which I say are, are quite con convoluted with this this oral scenario um, because as we'll see later on in the next tutorial at grade 9 um, they do count this mark so making it hide and unhide is not as obvious as it sounds so, and which is in fact why I think they they have this this oral one mark still come through on their grade 8 and 7 mark sheets and even in the phase 2 section but they waited north because in in a sense it's exactly what I'm saying is there is no method really to say well in the case of this grade it must show in the case of that grade it mustn't show um, it would it would mean that every year you would have to constantly hard code it instead of having a set template in place already so as I say for grade 8 and 7 their subject advisors have decided they didn't want oral 1 to count as part of the term 2 mark and so they waited as naught um, then in actual fact <clears throat> you won't have to capture in anything in this 
column over here. This column over here, the mark out of 30, which you see here, is the mark that um, was generated by the task P1 calcula calculator, let's say, let's call it that. Um, and you might say, well, this, um, th this final section, task 6, has as one of its a part of its composition this P1 oral mark so why should we not be entering this mark well the answer is that we actually know the mark already from the fact that it was over here we know that the mark is uh, untainted let's say but well it is tainted in the fact that it keeps getting converted but untainted by the term one mark and so again you'll see in the formula building exercise how we we get it to jump around converting it and converting it in the formula so that actually um, by the time the calculation for this third task, task 6, okay, which is the third element of the final term 2 mark, um, by the time it, 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 it is calculated, it, it actually does incorporate this, this, uh, this mark out of 30. And, and just to, to show you, um, that although there's four sections here, as I've already discussed, you've got a mark, uh, the, the, the first task, this, the term two mark is comprised of three tasks ultimately. It's comprised by this task, which is the oral mark, which gets converted to a mark out of 30. And it's comprised of this literature mark, which gets converted to a mark out of 30. And it's comprised of this task six mark, which is made up of these three areas, which again includes the oral. So yes, it does come, it counts twice toward the term two oral mark counts twice towards the end of the term two mark. Um, and it's weighted 40. So it's 30, 30 and 40, which makes up the 100% of the weighting for the term two mark. Um, and again, as I say, that will be made clearer in the uh, the formula building exercise um, for those who are able to concentrate and follow closely when when I get to that um, you'll see how it works out um, but you will also know have the comfort of knowing that the formula is done and that actually maneuvering within the formula um, it's not that difficult in terms of, let's say, if you uh, added an activity. Some schools, for instance, I know that don't only want unprepared reading in the task to oral. They want unprepared and prepared reading. They want two marks in there. And so it's a question of having at least a light understanding of how the formulas are derived. And, and it, it's also good to know how SAMS is coming up with their marks. Um, so that you know as well, and you have these explanations at hand for whoever may want to know them, parents in particular. Um, but of course, um, the so so and so, if you have a light understanding, you're able to uh, maneuver within the formula somewhat. Well, completely. Um, but in terms of your level of understanding, um, you will have a certain amount of flexibility. The more you understand, the more flexibility you have, obviously. Um, okay, and so just to sort of complete that, obviously, the mark out of 40, which is this mark out of here, is an entry point, and the mark out of 30 over there is an entry point. Okay, you'll see that um, these, again, just to, just to show that the mark sheet knows that these three areas are within the same task, even though it doesn't show this task calculated column, um, you can see uh, here where it says P1 oral task 6. Okay, there's the P1 oral and it sees the task 6. Again, same thing over there and same thing over there, but that is just for display purposes. The real magic is in the sense that it knows the activity number, each of the three activity numbers are different, and it knows that they all fall within the same task which you can see by virtue of the fact that the task reference numbers are the same. So I hope that provides clarity on how the mark sheet works out to look, uh, to works out to compare to the uh, mark sheet in, in SAMS. Uh, and as I say, we've tried to make it so that it's simpler in terms of the staff are seeing a mark and they're going, well, I must have a, an assessment for that. 
and I must simply enter a mark. As I say in the language sections, and fortunately in the rest of the, fortunately or unfortunately, because because they're different between the subjects, there isn't a complete standardized way of doing it. But And if, if there was, then we could hook into something or hold on to something, so to speak, in terms of, say, hiding columns that, that uh, were redundant, let's say. Um, but fortunately, in another sense, in the other subjects, they don't have these um, uh, these convoluted, strange scenarios. Um, and so you do find that every column that is in there is a, a column that needs to be uh, have have a mark entered it. If you look at the um, the grade seven tutorial, as I showed you in the video manual in index at the beginning of this tutorial, the grade seven English home language explanation, um, you'll see that I also go on to show how you can create a template. You c you can go to your mark sheets template and read these out and reproduce your English or language uh, home language uh, mark sheets. Let's say. Um, so that when you give them to your staff, they can see that uh, these columns are not actually to, to the, there is nothing to actually enter um, in these columns. Um, uh, that concludes this tutorial. Um, if there is anything I, I think I haven't covered, um, I'm sure to, to also mention it in the next tutorial, the grade 9 tutorial. Um, it, it is important it is handy folks to to watch even let's say the grade 7 tutorial of your high school you might think well that's not relevant to me but I think it is handy to watch it or at least have at least watch it once and, and glance at it because it does bring about a level of understanding uh, to the complete picture thank you folks bye